All right, let's do another problem. Let's do an air compressor. And so this is the air compressor. The air is going in at 15 PSI uh, and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's being compressed and it comes out at 150 PSI, so higher pressure, 620 degrees Fahrenheit, so pretty hot. And it's really cooking along at 350 uh, feet per second. So there's some heat escaping. There's 1,500 BTUs per minute escaping from this air compressor to the environment that's being held at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And it requires 400 horsepower to, to, uh, to compress the air. So the question here might be, what's the entropy generation rate? So this is a similar problem to the last one we did, except uh, this time we're working with air. So again, we can write the entropy balance equation, it would look like this, where S2 minus S1, the left-hand side, is, is the control volume of the system. And then you've got the uh, all the sums of the heat transfers divided by their temperatures at which they're communicating with the system. And then there's the mass flow in and S and the mass flow out plus the entropy generation. So given that this is steady, uh, again, the left-hand side would be equal to zero and you'd just be left with these terms. There's only one um, uh, heat exchange going on here, and then you've got your entropy. So I could rearrange this equation for S gen to be S gen equals minus this uh, heat exchange, and then the minus the outs plus uh, or minus the ins plus the outs. So I'm going to work in rate right here, um, so I can just dot all of these, and um, that's what we're being asked for. So I think at this point we could just fix the states and see what we've got left if we've got enough information to do this problem. So if I fix the states, I'm going to use table A17 because this is air. And at this temperature, I can read off that H1 is going to be 124.7 BTUs per pound mass. And I'm going to get S0 degree or S1 degree off that table as well. So I'm going to work with the, uh, this will be the variable specific heat formulation when I calculate S. State two is also pretty straightforward. Uh, I know the temperature, so I can just read it right off the table, A17. So what I don't know when I look at this equation is I don't know what M dot is. I know that M dot N is equal to M dot out. That's just a simple conservation of mass here. But I don't know what M dot is, so I'm left with kind of two unknowns, S gen and M dot. So I can write another equation, right? So every time you, you have an unknown, hopefully you can write an equation to solve for it. So here's the first law. Um, I'm going to use the first law because uh, that's all I got left. I've used the second law. I've used conservation of mass. So if I write the first law, and there it is in all of its form, again, the left-hand side is going to be zero because it's steady. And I've got some work in and some, some Q. Uh, I got no Q in here, and I got some mass going in. I think I'm going to keep that uh, kinetic energy term just just for a little bit uh, to see what happens because this 350 degrees uh, 350 feet per second that's crazy fast coming out of there so this is what I would have my first law would reduce down to I just have the work in minus the Q out plus the mass coming in and it's carrying with it some entropy and some kinetic energy and I'm going to neglect the potential energy and then here's the stuff going out uh, H and uh, M2. Now, I suspect that it's going in at low velocity. Um, so I suspect that uh, this is going to be close to um, zero or small. So I'm going to neglect that actual kinetic energy going in. I'm just going to account for the kinetic energy coming out. So if I do that, I've got the 400 horsepower and I have to convert it to something that's uh, consistent. And I think I'm going to go with BTUs per second. And then my heat transfer is 1,500 BTUs per minute, so I can convert that to seconds. And then I've got my entropy going in minus my entropy coming out. And then I've got this three, uh, 350 feet per second quantity squared, and then I have to get it to BTUs per pound mass. So I'm going to divide by um, this unit conversion. So ultimately, uh, I can solve for M dot here and get 1.8. Five two pound mass per second. So now uh, I think I got everything I need to to write my entropy balance equation. So here it is again. This is my entropy balance. And there's one tricky thing left that uh, sometimes 
gives us problems. That is kind of just keep in mind what's going on. This is my out minus n, and this is my q, uh, q of k. So this q of k is not written as an out or an in, so I have to be cognizant of the sign convention when I insert the heat transfer here. So keep in mind that q out is like minus heat transfer, right? So when I substitute in, uh, this negative sign came from the equation, but because this is an outgoing heat transfer, it's gonna flip that sign again. Just to reiterate, uh, when we work with the first law, we build the sign convention right in. We have, we have Q in is positive here and Q out is negative here. So we never really worry about it. We just stick in a positive number uh, into those and the sign is built in. But when we work with the entropy generation equation or the uh, entropy balance, we do have to say, well, if it's, if it's uh, out Q, then that would be put in as a negative number. So that negative and negative is going to become a positive. The other thing to, to recognize, and this is just confusing nomenclature on the part of all thermo books, is this is this S out minus Sn, but really it's like S2 minus S1. That's the way that we've written the equation. And that's not to be confused with uh, this S2 minus S1. This is the control volume, the change in time. And these are the ins and outs. But when we write uh, things like, well, what's the entropy change for an ideal gas? We typically write them as two minus one state, this state minus that state, whatever it is, whether it's in the control volume or the ins and the outs. So that's also a source of confusion just because of the nomenclature. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna change the sign here to be positive Q out for the heat transfer. And then I'm gonna write my S2 minus S1, which is really this N out minus N uh, and since I'm using the uh, constant sp or variable specific heat, the form looks like this. And this temperature TK here is the 60 degrees Fahrenheit we were told was the environment temperature. So the rest of it is just kind of uh, plug and chug. You end up with uh, having to make sure you keep your units right, but you got this 1500 divided by 60 Fahrenheit. So you got to convert it to rank in and you got rid of the minutes to convert it to seconds. And then um, here's your S degree one and your S degree two minus the, uh, the R value, which I'm getting from the table for air. Um, and that's a constant with respect to temperature. And then the ratio of pressures. So you can see that the contribution due to the heat transfer and the increase in uh, entropy is uh, 0.048. The contribution due to the change in state is 0.037, so a little bit smaller than the heat transfer, but together it's about 0.0853 BTUs per second ranking. All right.